fanboys. Am I right? So, peeps saw here, and this is a rant video. Now, this rant video, and yes, I'm aware I haven't shaved, just ignore that. This rant video is going to be on a topic that I think a lot of gamers will agree with me upon. And some of you will not, because I hope none of you that are subscribed to me fall under this. Fanboys. Now you'll be hearing a fan in the background, just ignore that. Fanboys are legitimately one of the worst things in gaming. Not the worst, they are one of the worst. They're up there with uh, all these games as a service things, you know, all the stuff. But they're terrible. And they have existed since the dawn of gaming. Now, I want to point something out. Before anybody accuses me of being biased towards some platforms, I have all the platforms. I have a... I have a Steam Deck, I have a PS5, an Xbox Series X, and a Switch, so I play all platforms. I have grown up with gaming. Obviously, PlayStation and Nintendo were the big dogs when I was growing up, so that's why I'm most attached to it. And I've never understood. Now, if you're a child or a teenager, and you have, you exhibit the fanboy behaviour like saying, such and such console sucks, such and such better, or like you call PlayStation gay station, or Xbox crap box, or whatever the hell you want to call them. If you're a teenager or a kid and you do that, I understand because you're a, you're a teenager or a kid, you, you don't know any better. But if you're a fully grown adult who either has kids or is at least in their 20s or 30s, and you behave like a fanboy, you should know better. You legitimately should know better. Because what you're effectively doing by behaving like that is you are behaving like a child. Now, one of the things that fanboy, there are different things that fanboys say. They all say how such and such is superior to such and such, but they'll never give legitimate reasons why. Now, I recently had an encounter with a fanboy. Now, th this was basically what made me want to do this video. A fanboy was saying something along the lines of Xbox is better than anything else because it has frame rate boost. And all I replied with was... It, I, all I replied with was, of all the things that you could say, that's the hill you want to go on. That's the hill you're willing to die on. The frame rate boost. A feature which is really only used for old games. It's like, well, Xbox 360 games can play on this at 60 at FPS. I pointed out that most of those Xbox 360 games could do that anyway. And I said, but continue to keep shilling for a company that doesn't care about you. Newsflash, these companies are not your friends. I said that simple thing. And this dude got so triggered, he immediately went on the offensive. And you know what he tried to say? He attacked the way I look and said that I looked scary and that I should change my profile picture so that people don't see my face. That's, that's your response to me basically calling you out for being a fanboy and telling you the truth. That's, that's, that's your response to make fun of the way I look. Because I really give a shit, because, like, I really give a shit what a fanboy, a pathetic basement dwelling fanboy thinks of how I look. I don't care. And to top it off, when you have these fanboys where they say these ridiculous, ludicrous things. Hold on a sec. When they say these ridiculous, ludicrous things, like, you know... When they say stuff like, oh, this console sucks because this, this, this. And the worst thing, the one of the worst things that fanboys 
say, but I can't stand is. True gamers only play this platform. No. True gamers will play video games with guys- And sorry, I've just opened the window because it's hot. True gamers will play games regardless of what platform they're on. They'll play games, enjoy them, and it won't bother them what platform that it's on. A true gamer won't care what platform they're playing. They'll just play the damn games. Only a fanboy only will play on one system and then say the rest suck. Fanboys also like to send death threats to people when things don't go their way. They don't get a very specific thing that they want in a game. They will send death threats to the people that made it. They have one of their beloved exclusives go to another platform. Instead of being happy about it because, of more, because more people get to experience it, they bitch and complain and say that the company that made it stabbed them in the back. For them to have stabbed you in the back, they'd have had to have been on your side to begin with. That's kind of how that works. Fanboys, I know, have been around since the beginning of gaming. They've always been there, they always will be. But the problem that I have with them is... They are actually so toxic and so... There are people who legitimately think that all of us behave that way. Us gamers who play multiple systems and, you know, will play anything, like, this is going to piss off Xbox and PlayStation fanboys. I play Halo and Spider-Man, Marvel Spider-Man, on my Steam Deck. Yeah. Because guess what? I love video games. Yes, I grew up more with PlayStation and Nintendo. That doesn't mean I'm going to bend over and blindly support them. If these companies do stupid shit, I'm going to call it out. Fanboys won't do that. In fact, if you dare to say anything negative about their beloved company, they will harass you and basically bully you because you dare to have an opinion that doesn't match up with theirs. And don't give... Don't... I'm not going to go in to the topic of which one is more toxic because all of them are toxic. And here's a little thing. When a fanboy says, we only like this, we only want this. No, you only want this. If a fanboy, for example, says, for example, if a fanboy, when um, PlayStation started bringing, bringing games to PC and people are like, we don't want this. No. Only you don't want that, because you're a fanboy and you think losing exclusives means you don't have bragging rights anymore. When Xbox players were bitching and saying, we don't want this game to go to other platforms. Like, when they started bringing their game, Xbox started bringing their game to the platforms. And Xbox, yes that's what Xbox numbers are called, started saying, this game is devalued now. How does a game going to multiple platforms devalue it? I would argue, if anything, it adds more value to it because more people can play it, more people buy it, meaning the sales will be higher, meaning the game will be more successful. But of course, you can't reason with these fanboys. Of course, there's also the type of fanboy who will stalk people because they have a differing opinion. I mean, there are fanboys who outright fight people. Do you want to know how many times I have gone out in the street wearing either a PlayStation shirt? I have a PlayStation jacket, okay? I have a PlayStation jacket, I have an Xbox cap and a PlayStation cap, and I also have Nintendo shirts. I went out once wearing a Legend of Zelda shirt with a PlayStation jacket and an Xbox cap. You want to know the looks I got from people. I got dirty looks. I had people look at me and mutter some stuff along the lines of make a decision. And I had people look at me like they were... I had people younger than me look at me confused and as if like, how is this person supporting... I like all four platforms, okay? 
Now, granted, my reach with PC is is limited to Steam Deck, but that's still PC. I don't dis I don't discriminate. I love all platforms equally. Now, obviously, I play certain platforms more than others. Right now, I play. It would be PlayStation and PC I play most because PS5 and Steam Deck. But that doesn't mean I'm not going to play a game on a specific plat. I won't just turn my nose up at a game if it's exclusive to a specific platform. Okay. But there are fanboys who think that they are the only gamers. How they think that they're entitled. And the gatekeeping, saying you don't deserve, saying when a game goes to another platform, they don't deserve it. While you telling other people they don't deserve to play a specific game because it's not exclusive to your console anymore or your platform anymore, tells me you don't rip and deserve to play that game either. And all this mentality, and I know back in the 90s, you had the companies feed into this with stuff like Genesis does, Sega does what Nintendo don't. With those ads with Crash Bandicoot outside Nintendo's headquarters saying your worst nightmare has, has arrived. The ads where I think there was an ad where Nintendo people kidnapped Sonic and had him tied up or something. Like, that was in the 90s. That was the 90s. That was back when that was acceptable. We are now in 2024. We've moved past this. That kind of stuff, the companies themselves don't do anymore. Heck, all of the companies actually work together. You can get PlayStation Studio games on PC. You can get Xbox games on PC. You're going to be getting a PlayStation game on the Switch. Now, obviously, Nintendo is the outlier in this. They, they're the one that doesn't, they haven't shared any of their games with anybody yet. But give it time, they will. Give it time, they will. Because that is the direction the industry is going in. The industry is going in a direction where games are becoming so expensive to make, but studios, even the big, the big four, or three or four, whichever, are putting their games out on other platforms just simply so that they can make back the money it costs to make that game. Some people sit there like, oh, it's terrible that this game is going to be on other platforms. How is it terrible that a game gets a larger audience than it already had? This is why when people say Far Fantasy 7 Remake should never come to Xbox or PC or whatever. Why shouldn't it? Because it's a one less exclusive that PlayStation has? What does that matter? What does that matter anymore? If this was 15 or 20 years ago, this was the PS1, PS2 era, I'd be like, okay, yeah, you yeah, that's fine, it's weird. But we live in an era now where it's genuinely and generally accepted that when a game releases, even if it's made by one of the big studios, depending on what, you know, how big of it is, it can go anywhere. Like, if you're going to sit there and be, obviously, there's some instances where the game would be impossible to put on a platform. It's like, we're not going to get Astro's Playroom as a free download on PC because that game is dependent on the DualSense controller. But if you sit there like, we're not going to get Spider-Man 2 on PC. We're not going to get this game, that game on PC. You might. You don't know that. It just... And then, there's the other type of fanboy. A fanboy who makes themselves look stupid when you point out to them. If you say to a fanboy, if fanboy's like, says this or this, say for example, a fanboy says, Duh, PC suck. The Nintendo suck. The PlayStation suck. The Xbox whatever. If someone says that and then you point out to them, you're being a fanboy, and their response to you is, no, you're a fanboy. What? How is that? That's like a childish playground comeback. And then the ones who, when you preface to them, you have this system, this system, this system, this system. They're like, oh no, you don't, you're a fanboy. 
I have had instances where people have called me a fanboy for saying something about one of the big companies that they don't approve with that's actually true. And I've shown photographic evidence of me having systems from multiple companies, even ones from years ago. And I've been called a fanboy. I ain't a fanboy. You know what I'm a fan of? I'm a fan of video games. And I don't like it when you have stupid, brainless halfwits coming in to the industry that I love, claiming they're hardcore gamers, and then shitting on any system that isn't the specific one that they favour. Now, did I ever behave this way when I was a kid? No, I didn't. I never behaved this way as a kid, and I've never understood. I can understand why some kids and teenagers behave this way, because they don't know better, but I never personally behaved this way. Now granted, that's because I was fortunate enough to, every Christmas and birthday, if there was a system I wanted, my parents would try everything in their power to get me it for years. So I was lucky in that regard. But even if I only had one system at a time, I was never shit on the other systems, because I always understood, you know, it's a, it's a written rule, if you want to be a proper, dedicated, hardcore gamer, you don't talk trash about the competition. Wait, like, I can stand here, and I can say, you know, yeah, do these companies do stupid things? Yes, they all do. God damn do they all do stupid things. So, some... One company in particular more than the others, I'll let you figure out which. But they all do stupid boneheaded things. Am I going to stand here and only call one of them out on it or the others out? No, I'm going to call any of them out on it. Because I'm passionate about this industry and I want this industry to go in a positive direction. Because right now, right now, oh boy, this industry is in a sorry, sorry state. Like, just... And what annoys me is, you have people who are older than me. You have people who are in their 30s and 40s acting like fanboys for these companies. Like, why? I mean, I could stand... Okay, most of the gaming merchandise that's branded after the consoles that I own is PlayStation. But that's because I like the look of their merch. That has nothing to have to do with it. I actually think that the blue and the black they had for the PS4 era were great contrasting colours. That's why I have a lot of merch to do with that. But I also have Nintendo merchandise. I have Xbox merchandise. I have all all of them. I have all of them. But to me, when I'm looking at it from a perspective of somebody who plays games on every system, I look at what fanboys, the way fanboys behave. I, I, I still, like, I look at the way that fanboys be I keep getting spammed messages. I'm looking at the way that fanboys behave. And I look at it and I'm like, how can you behave in this way and have the fucking audacity, the fucking balls to call yourself a fair and unbiased gamer? No, you're not a fair and unbiased gamer. You're a fucking fanboy who dick rides their console because you're too stupid to get it through your head that there are actually positives to there are positives and negatives to every platform. The positives to the place. Do you want me to list what I personally regard the positive and negatives each? Positives to PlayStation. They have systems that last a long time. They have good interfaces. They have great first party single player exclusives. Negatives. Their online service is shit. Another negative. Their games are overpriced. Another negative.
they have so many management changes in the past few years, I'm amazed they still have any clue what they're doing. Xbox positives. Game Pass. Gives you access to games cheaper. They have a familiar UI which is passed off from the last generation. Backwards compatibility over their entire generations. Negatives. They keep buying shit. Negative. They don't have any games in their library that they can compete with. They've said this themselves. They have said this themselves. Nintendo. Positives. Great for families and big groups. They have positive. They have some of the most recognizable and beloved IPs on the planet. Negative. Their systems are underpowered, meaning they don't get the same third-party library that the PlayStation and Xbox do. PC slash Steam. Positives. They have frequent sales, meaning the game's cheaper. Positive. You can mod the games on them easily. Negative. There's no guarantee that a game is going to work on your computer. Negative. A lot of the time, games release in broken states because of the simple fact of all the components within a PC, they have to combat more. But am I going to shit talk any of them and say such and such is better? No. Am I going to stand here and be like, this place is the best place to play? No. The best place, the best place to play games of your choosing is wherever the hell you prefer to play them. But fanboys, they can't grasp that. They can't grasp that. Do you know, there's actually been instances, I've seen this, I have seen this with my own eyes. I was in a game store a while ago, yes, they still exist, and there was a group of four friends. Three of them were looking at PlayStation games. One of them went over to look at the Xbox games. Do you know what I actually heard one of the other one of the boys say? If you buy any game for that system, you're no friend of ours. I'm serious. There were actually there was actually somebody who was willing to end a friendship because his friend dared to have a different platform, dared to play games on a different platform to him. I just, the stupidity behind that is staggering. How can you stand there and be like, this person's one of my best friends, but only if they play this platform. I don't care what platform people play games on, okay? I do not care what platform people play games on. As long as people enjoy games and don't shit talk others for deciding to play this, to play games on a different platform, I'm happy. Okay? You can own only one platform and be perfectly fine in my eyes. If you own one platform and you enjoy playing games on it, and then when people play games on other platforms but you can't play and you, you say to them, you're lucky, I wish I could play this game on my platform. That's fine by me. That's being respectful. That is being a gamer. That is understanding. That is being understanding that there are multiple different choices here. But if you play video games on one specific platform and you deliberately go out of your way to shit talk people who play games on other platforms, your opinion means nothing to me. You are not a gamer in that situation. You are a fanboy and we do not claim you. We do not. 
But you're, you're a fanboy in that situation, and us gamers, we do not claim you. I do not like fanboys. Now, obviously, there is also the type of fanboy who is massively into a specific platform and loves how to think about it that doesn't shit talk other people. The res I call these the respectful fanboys. If you're like that, you're fine by me too. Because you love a specific platform, but you're respectful to the other platforms as well. Okay? I know people like this. I know somebody who is a massive, diehard Xbox fan. And when he hears about games that are coming out on PlayStation that he can't play, but I can, and other people that we're friends with can, he asks them about it. He's like, are you excited for this game? He's like, Shh. And he even says, I wish I could play it. That's fine. That's respectful. That's respectful. But if you're one of these fanboys who's like, oh, you play you play this platform, I don't want anything to do with it. I've actually had people, right, have conversations with me about specific games that are only on one platform. Be perfectly fine with me. Be perfectly fine with me. And then when they've asked, oh, so you only play this platform too? If, and I answer, no, I play every platform. They immediately turn on me like, they immediately turn on me like that. Because I didn't play only where they choose to play. You want to know why I play games on every platform? I'm going to get in close for you to this. Because this is going to be earth shattering to you fanboys. Me and other people play, multi play games on all platforms because we love video games. We love video games. We do not care what we do not care what platform a game is on. We will play it. If we want to play it, we will play it. Regardless of the platform it's on. We won't stand there and chat shit about specific platforms. And you want to know something? When I see fanboys behave, it, I actually, I hate fanboys, but I will admit one thing. Some of the stupid shit that they say is entertaining as hell to see. Because the levels of stupidity that they are willing to sink to, to try and make you see their way of thinking. Or amount of goalpost moving that they will do to fit a specific narrative is actually hilarious. And if they spent, if they spent as much time playing video games as they do shit talking people who play on other platforms that they d that they don't like, maybe they wouldn't be so brain dead. Like seriously, fanboys are the worst. I could go, I could literally go on for hours about why I actually think that fanboys are the worst. I'm going to say another instance. Now, this one. This one, in particular, is a very, very, very disgusting incident. And this, unfortunately, is going to throw a specific fan base under the bus. I'm sorry in advance if you're a fan, if you're a member of this fan base, but you behave in a rational way unlike these people. There was a news article, a news story. Uh, I can't remember what it was. But it was here in the UK, a news story broke of a boy who had terminal cancer. Now, he didn't have long to live, but he was a massive, massive, and I mean a massive PlayStation fan. And when he died, when he died, they put PlayStation colors and logo on his coffin. Do you want to know what some Xbox fans said to this boy's parents? The parents of this boy who had just died from terminal cancer. 
your son died because he was a PlayStation fan. Yes, you heard that right. There were actually people who said that. And they also said stuff like, oh, he didn't play Xbox, so therefore he deserved to die. What the hell is wrong with you? And obviously, there have been instances where there was an Xbox, I think it was an Xbox uh, promotional thing they did, where there was a boy that had a severe disability, and he was using the, I can't remember what it's called, but it's their controller that's like, People with disabilities can use. Um, I can't remember the name of it. But hopefully people know what I mean. Uh, and people were saying, Oh, he has this disability. And they're laughing at him and making fun of him. So fanboys will even do it to people with disabilities. I'm autistic. Why don't you try this shit with me and see how far it gets you? Because I've been gaming... For years. I have been gaming my entire life. Okay? I have seen... I have probably been through more fucking console debt generations than a lot of people watching this have. And... I've had instances... I had an instance in school... Where... I've... Basically, I had... I had at school... Uh, this was a very long time ago. I had in school, because I always had PlayStation Nintendo at this point. I had in school at this point, I had a PlayStation 2 pencil case. That actually looked like a PlayStation 2. And the pencils I had inside of it were Mario and Pokemon. Now, there was a kid in my class. I'm not going to name his name. There was a kid in my class who was a die-hard Xbox fan. And when I say die-hard Xbox fan, I mean he would go out of his way to make every conversation, even things teachers said. Like a teacher could say a math equation and he'd somehow make it about how many levels there are in Halo or some shit. He saw me with this pencil case, with the PlayStation pencil case, or the Mario pencils. And he specifically, I remember this well, he specifically said to me, how come you don't have any Xbox stuff? You have, you have Nintendo pencils and a PlayStation pencil case. Why do you have any Xbox stuff? Now, me just being, you know, someone who loves video games said, well, that's because I don't have an Xbox. I don't own an Xbox. I never owned an Xbox. I didn't get into Xbox until the Xbox 360. And even then, I only had one for a little bit. So, I said, I don't have an Xbox. I have a PlayStation 2 and a GameCube. And he's like, why don't you have an Xbox? I'm like, because I don't, it doesn't have any games on it that I want, that interest me. That I can't play elsewhere. Which, Anyone watching this, is that a, that's a that's a legitimately valid excuse to say, right? That's a valid reason. If a game system has no games on it that interest you that you can't play elsewhere, why would you own it? You wouldn't. He then was like, oh, okay. And I thought nothing more of it. Then later that same day, on the playground, I turn around, this kid deliberately trips me up. And says, that's for not having an Xbox. Seriously did this. Now, I didn't report this to teachers. Because why would I report this to a teacher? They would think I was crazy if I told them that I was the reason. So do you know what I did? I did the next best thing. I showed him specifically why. I do not have an Xbox, but had a PlayStation 2 and a GameCube. Now, keep in mind, this was before I played Halo. I I genuinely love Halo. Halo was the Halo was Halo was basically the game that got me into Xbox. But then the thing was this: 
this kid. Now, I thought to myself, okay, maybe we could work this out. So I was like, okay then, if you think Xbox is so great, why don't you invite me to your house, play your Xbox, see if I actually like it. And then, I will invite you to mine to play PS2 and GameCube, see if you like it. You know what happened? He invited me to his place. I played the Xbox, played Halo, loved it. Okay? Took him to my house. I had him play Super Mario Sunshine on the GameCube. And I also had him play um, Kingdom Hearts on the PS2. And I remember very vividly what he said. I remember very vividly what he said. And it's funny in hindsight when I tell you how the story ends. He said, Is this, for, is this water thing supposed to be a gun? When he was playing Mario Sunshine, he asked if Flood was supposed to be a gun. He's like, no, it's, it's not a gun. Then when he played Kingdom Hearts, like, what's this key thing he's holding? Like, it's a keyblade, it's like a sword. But then, me and him started to develop an understanding of each other. We started to develop an understanding. Do you know something? That kid, I'm still in contact with him. To this day. And you want to know something? He is now one of my closest friends. Because he showed me. What I was missing with games. I showed him what he was missing with games. And we have since. Adopted as many systems as we can. So that we don't miss out. Crazy right? Absolutely crazy that that happened. So. Next time you try being a fanboy to somebody. And they explain to you the reason why they don't have a particular system that you have. Maybe try and see things from their perspective instead of being blind and up the ass of a company. Okay? Maybe try that. Because you never know, you might actually find games on these systems that you enjoy. Now, I'll close this out by saying... Fanboys, unfortunately, they're always going to be around. But if you are a person who loves video games, okay, if you're a person who loves video games, don't let fanboys, and you prefer playing, and you love playing games in a specific place, don't let fanboys talk shit to you because of choices that you've made for your game. Because 99.9% .9 of the time, they either do it, for attention because they think it makes them look good which by the way it doesn't it makes them look stupid and reflects very 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 badly on that system's entire fan base or they're jealous because you get to play more games than they do they're probably jealous because you get your pick of where you play games but guess what has been a thing for years. Oh, and also, this is my closing point to fanboys. Fanboys. I'm going to say this now. Nintendo. They're not your friend. Sony. They're not your friend. Microsoft. Are not your friend. Valve. Are not your friend. Friend. These companies are not your friends. These companies see us as just statistics. None of them are our friends. And if a company claims to be your friend, run for the goddamn hills. Because never has a company said they are your friend and have actually had your best interests. So next time you stand there and say, this company is my friend, blah, 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 maybe actually sit there and rethink that. Maybe sit there and think about if maybe they are or maybe they're not. Or if maybe you're just a blind fanboy. Now, obviously, not everybody watching this is going to be a fanboy. 
I would hope that none of you watching this are. I would hope that everybody watching this is mature enough and understanding enough to understand and know there are multiple different choices when it comes to playing video games. And that just because you don't like a specific platform doesn't mean it's bad. Because like I said earlier, all four have their positives, all four have their negatives. But you want to know what all four have in common. They have phenomenal, phenomenal games and experiences that help us get distracted from the shitty, shitty, shitty outside world. And I would hope that there are some of you watching this who will look back on behaviours you've had in the past being fanboys and laugh at it. Because I think we can all agree on one thing. We all love video games, so why should we fight? Why should we fight if we all love the same thing? It doesn't matter to me if your allegiance is blue, if your allegiance is red, if your allegiance is green, or your allegiance is blackishy, silvery, blue, whatever the hell Valve's color is. It doesn't matter to me what your allegiance is that. You're a gamer. If you're respectful, as you, you could be aligned to any of them only. As long as you're respectful to other gamers, I'm fine. It's when you cross that line and you basically become a Nintendo, a, uh, a Pony, an Xbox, or PC math, or PC elitist. When you become one of those. And you start harassing and trash talking people and telling people to go kill themselves and making fun of people dying because they're a fan of a specific platform. That's when I take issue. Because that's when you take it from being about the games and make it more about your personal insecurities. If you like what you saw, smack that like button, slap that notification bell, smash that subscribe button. This is Sora, signing out. Are you guys, peace.